In the previous video, I showed you the hybridization of chrome 3, where we had D2SP3, and that's an inner D orbital complex. This time, I'm going to show you the hybridization of an iron complex. This too has uh, six ligands, as you can see, six water molecules. And um, its geometry is also, let's get a decent pen here, octahedral. We know that because we have six ligands attached. The magnetic properties, we're going to see later that it is paramagnetic. And so then we want to draw the energy diagram. So first we're going to have iron 2. Here's the 3D. And then we've got 4S. You'll notice that on the 3D level, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. The 4S, we know we've lost both of those. And the 4P. And I also want to show you the 4D. So. Um, as you can see, unlike chromium, we've got two electrons. So these two orbitals are not empty. It is possible to cause these two electrons to move over and pair up. In that case, these two would be empty. That has to do with the ligand. This is considered a weak field. ligand, and what that means is with a weak field ligand, you're not going to cause these electrons to be paired up. More on that later. Let's just see how this hybridizes. So this is our ground state for iron 2. What we're going to end up with is the exact same arrangement that we have in the ion, and we're going to hybridize six orbitals, but this time it's going to be sp3d2. So we hybridize. We get are six, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is sp3d2. So this is what we call an outer d orbital complex, as opposed to the previous example that was inner d orbital. We're going to go ahead and add our pairs of electrons. All of these are supplied by the ligand, which is water. And so we have six sigma H2O bonds. And again, this is our bonded state. So I've shown you an example with D2SP3, and this time we're looking at SP3D2. We've got our six orbitals, each with a ligand, two electrons supplied uh, by the ligand. 